What's up guys? I'm going to go over iontophoresis real quick because this is something that like might show up on the boards, might not depending on what they want to cover for, you know, electrical simulation and stuff like that. However, it's important to know because there's a good chance it will show up. So let's get into it. So what exactly is iontophoresis? So this is like the important things to know. It's a continuous, direct, or sometimes it'll be referred to as galvanic current is monopolar. So that means it is like one pole is like active and everything. The other one is a dispersive electrode, but because they have the one that's, you know, pushing the medication into the skin, that is the one that is going to be the active um, electrode. So it's going to drive medication into the body by repelling the medication polarity. So example, if you have, remember, negative ions will repel. So remember, if you try to put two ends of the magnet together that are the same side, it will repel. Same thing with electricity. If you put two um, negative like electrons together, they'll repel each other. If you put two positive, um, whatever the positive one is, <laughs> they'll repel each other as well. So remember, likes will repel, opposites attract kind of thing. So there, for example, like it'll drive negative ions into the body when placed on the cathode, which is a negatively charged electrode which will push the medication into the body. So essentially the medication is negatively charged and then it sees that it's on a negatively charged um, uh, electrode, which is the cathode. And it's like, ah, get away from me. So it goes into the skin. So the negative pole is going to be the cathode. So that is a negatively charged, I'm saying charged, but it's the negative electrode that's pushing it into the skin. And then the positive pole of it would be called the anode. So. Moving on to the next part. So indications for autophoresis. So why would we use this on somebody? So I have a list of all the reasons why we would use this on somebody with also the types of medications that would be used with this specific like type of thing. So if you're in pain, you would use lidocaine or salicylate. I said that wrong, ignore me. But for example, these are some of the things and I'll highlight on the next one, which ones are like the really important ones that the boards likes to kind of pick at. So calcium deposits, uh, pain, fungal infections, keloids, so that's where you have like excessive skin growth and like randomly like hyperplasia kind of stuff going on, muscle spasms. So myositis ossificans, so that's similar to the um, heterotropic ossificans that happens when you have like a, a like a, when you bump your elbow or something like that, have trauma to the elbow and then like bone form. So it's like bone forming inside of the muscle, which this is kind of crazy. And I actually had this starting to happen to my quad after I totally ate it on a box jump. And yeah, we had to uh, pound it out of there. It was kind of interesting, but plantar warts, scar tissue, hyperhidrosis. So that's where you're excessively sweating, inflammation, ischemia, and wounds. I would say the big thing to point out in here is that pain lidocaine will help like alleviate a lot of the pain any sort of calcium deposits is acetic acid and same with ossificans i would say um understand that dexamethasone is used for inflammation and then wounds use zinc oxide those are more of the important ones so why wouldn't we use ionto on somebody so if they if they're allergic to the medication you don't want to use it on them because they'll have an allergic reaction and then if they have skin sensitivity reaction so remember erythema is normal when you're going to have iontophoresis on someone it's going to be pretty red and kind of feel a little like stingy in the spot that is like a normal reaction for ionto but i'm talking like if it's red for like a long time so like it'll be red for a little bit and then I'll kind of go away after like an hour or two or a couple hours. But if it's like still red the next time they come in and see you, that's where you have the skin sensitivity. Oh, I said sin, I should say skin sensitivity. And then make sure to check the skin every three to five minutes during treatment because erythema is normal following treatment for this patient. So checking the skin, making sure that it's just that little thing of erythema over the ionto patch and it isn't like spreading to the entire thing. So just kind of some safety things to make sure that you're checking on this patient, especially the first time that they're getting it. So medications for iontophoresis, this is where I highlighted like four of the main ones. So like dexamethasone, lidocaine, usually paired with epinephrine. And lidoc lidocaine will be paired with either epinephrine or dexamethasone. So dexamethasone is going to be negative. So using that with inflammation and then dexamethasone with lidocaine is if you have inflammation and pain, those are common one. Lidocaine with epinephrine, that's positive. That's used for pain as well. And then acetic acid, which is negative, 
that's an important one, used to break up calcium deposits. And I would also say at the end down here, zinc oxide, which is a positively charged one used for wounds, healing, and ulcers. That's also a really common one that will show up on the boards. But the rest of these, like calcium chloride, which is negative for scar tissue, keloids, and muscle spasms, copper sulfate, which is positive, used for fungal infections, um, iodine, it's just negative use for scars or adhesive capsulitis, magnesium sulfate, which is positive use for muscle spasms and ischemia. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce that salicylates, which is negative used for muscle and joint pain or plantar warts. And again, zinc oxide, I forgot to highlight this as one of the more important ones as I was going through this, but I would say zinc oxides being positive is important for like wounds, healing and ulcers and all of that, because we'll see that in wound care, especially with like the treatment of it, sorts of ulcers kind of going around the kind of area where the wound is, try to get some medication through the skin. Again, here's the big thing that the board's going to ask about. It's going to be about the parameters for ultrasounds, uh, ultrasound, well, parameters for iontophoresis. So like how they ask for the parameters for ultrasound, same kind of thing. So usually we're going to be using about two cc's or essentially it's two millimeters, cubic centimeters is what cc stands for, of the medication. So you're going to get that like needle thing out and you're going to pull the medication out and the patient's going to be like, ah, are you going to stab me? Probably not really. Um, and then you're going to put that on the... Um, active electrode. So remember, you're gonna have that dispersive one, which is kind of like just grounding it to make sure like the um, electricity is going somewhere and it's not just like shooting and like at you or something or into the air or whatever. It's grounded into the patient. That's the dispersive one. Then the active electrode is the one that's actually driving the medication into the skin. So remember, medication goes on the active electrode and that is going to be the one with the same polarity as medication. So if it's negative, it's going to go on the cathode. If it's positive medication, it's going to go on the anode. Remember, dosage is going to range anywhere from 40 to 80 milliamps per minute. So that's kind of what the dosage is. How many milliamps are being delivered into the body per minute? Most likely it's going to be 40. I would say the boards is probably going to pick a nice even number and it's going to pick 40. They might pick 60. They're going to pick multiples of 10 just to make it easy because you got to math a little bit with this. Amplitude is going to range from one to four million milliamps. And so that's because if it goes higher than that, it's kind of going in very aggressively and you're increasing the risk of burns and stuff like that. And we don't want that for the patient. Also, I remember when I did this in class, I could only handle like 1.7 milliamps because it was like really sensitive. Um, so I can imagine going above four. Anyways, um, so for example, if somebody is on full four, um, 40 milliamps per minute at four milliamps, amplitude, it will take 10 minutes for the medication to enter the body. This is because the, the formula for determining treatment time is going to be dosage divided by amplitude. So whatever that like 40 number probably is divided by whatever the amplitude is. So for example, if you have 40, but it's delivered at two, it's going to take 20 minutes. Make sense? So it's kind of like that. So treatment time will usually be about 10 to 20 minutes because and that's the thing, like having someone sit there on a modality for 40 minutes is kind of excessive. So in real life, we're probably going to put two cc's of whatever medication. It's probably going to be dex. And we're going to put it on a long release patch that goes over four, two to four hours, pull the little thing, say bye, cover it in some coband and let them be on their way. Um, but the boards want you to know how it's going to be in the scientific form. So important things to know. So this is probably if you want to skip everything else, just kind of like look at this slide. The important things to know for the boards is What's the polarity of the medication? Remember that ionto is a direct slash galvanic current. It's gonna be monopolar. So you just have like one pole that's active. That's pushing it into the skin. You're gonna put the medication on the, um, the electrode that has the same polarity of it. I worded this weird, but as I said before, if it's dexamethasone, that's negative. It's gonna go into cathode because that's the negative electrode and that's gonna push it into the skin because it doesn't, negatives wanna go away from each other. So go away somewhere and the only where it can go is into the body. And then dosage divided by amplitude is what you're gonna use as a formula for treatment time. So again, if they have 40 milliamperes per minute um, and they're having a 40 milliamps is going to be their, their amplitude. So 40 divided by four, that's going to be 10 minutes. So you gotta know what the medication's used for. So for example, dexamethasone is used for inflammation. That's probably like the most, like if any of them to know, no dexamethasone is used for inflammation. That's super important. So just kind of know what the medication is used for and these other things of like finding the parameters. And then I would also say just know like the indications and contraindications, which 
the indications will be what kind of med medication you're using. And then understand the contraindications is if they're allergic to the medication or if they're super sensitive to it. And generally a lot of the same um, contraindications are going to be applicable to just regular old like TENS units and whatnot, um, like eSIM and also with IONTO. The boards gets a little less picky about IONTO for some reason. So I would just stick with what I've already kind of covered, but just being a little careful because it is electricity. So sample question, guys. A physical therapist assistant is treating a patient diagnosed with a calcium deposit in their right quad. What kind of medication should the therapist use and which electrode should they put it on? One, dexamethasone, anode. Two, dexamethasone, cathode. Three, acetic acid, cathode. Or four, acetic acid, anode. So I'll give you guys a second to think about that. All right, guys, so the answer is acetic acid cathode. So remember, as we're looking at what we need to know, polarity of the medication, okay. Acetic acid is negative. We saw that over here. Acetic acid is negative and it's used to break up calcium deposits. So we see they have a calcium deposit, so therefore we'd use acetic acid. So remember, since it is negative, we have to put it on the electrode that has the same polarity. So what's the negative electrode that is going to be the cathode. So we're going to put it on the cathode because it's going to drive it into the skin because it's negative and we're using acetic acid because that is what breaks up calcium deposits. And it's actually kind of cool if you want to take some vinegar and like melt the, the calcium of like something, you can melt like a calcium pill or like we find like a random like calcium deposit from like, I don't know, somewhere. Um, it's kind of cool. We did it in chem once. It was pretty interesting. So it works. It's pretty cool. And like acetic acid is sort of just going to be over the counter vinegar, which is like, you know, pretty cheap, pretty interesting. So I hope that that was helpful guys. And kind of thinking about Ionto breaking it down to be easy. I will see you in the next one. Boxer me if you have any questions. Take care guys.